Behold, the power of dual extrusion 3D printing with both rigid and flexible materials. I made this wearable platform for a robot or armored glove. Stick around to see how. Greetings, fellow makers. I'm Bill, and this is a special episode of Prop 3D. Yes, we're bringing it back for an episode. Thanks to our friends at Matter Hackers, who hooked us up with the people at BCN3D, we had the chance to try out their new version of the Sigma 3D printer. I was really excited to try out this machine because it is a dual extruder machine and I've never had the chance to play with one of those. Now, ever since I saw James over at X Robots print with both flexible and rigid material in the same thing and have them bond together and do really cool flexible printed things. I wanted to give that a go. So I was really excited to try it out, make this machine do what I wanted it to do. So I made this flexible and rigid sort of glove platform thing that I could use to build like an armored gauntlet on top of or a robot hand. And it turned out pretty awesome. And I'm really excited to show you guys how. First, let's head on over to the computer. I went with Simplify 3D because I think it's awesome. And to start, I imported an FFF profile. Sigma provided a bunch of default profiles here. So it's the four millimeter brass for the left, four millimeter brass for the right. And then I picked a profile that was kind of close to what I had. So for this one, I went with an ABS and a flexible material. So I grabbed that, but I had to do some tweaking. I'll get to that in a minute. With that loaded, I loaded my models. So I imported the two STL models that I made in Fusion 360. These guys here, these are the two different parts. So I have the flexible part and the rigid part. When it comes to exporting STLs from Fusion 360 th like this, I, uh, I used Angus's tutorial over on Maker's Muse. I'll link to that, you can go check it out. He did a good job of explaining it. But to get going here, Simplify 3D has a dual extrusion wizard. So you load that up, you pick your uh, profile. So I picked that profile that I just loaded. And then I wanna make sure that the left extruder is extruding the, to the model that I want uh, to be rigid because I've loaded ABS in the left, left extruder and vice versa. So this finger flex is the name of the model. I'm gonna move that over to the right and then finger rigid is going to the left. So the right extruder is loaded up with Ninja Flex. Left extruder is loaded up with just a normal ABS plastic. I want to make sure that this is checked, group and align models. So when I hit OK, it puts them together. And now I can move this around like one model. So I just double click that and rotate this 270 degrees and then hit center and arrange. And sure enough, there it goes. That is my model ready to go. Big thing I need to change though, is it groups the two pieces together, the two processes. I need to ungroup those. This was a tip I got from my buddy Joel Telling. So I got to edit ungroup selection and it split those into two different processes because they need to have different settings. Color one, I double click that. And uh, I, the only thing I need to change, well, first I need to figure out what, what head this is so I click on layer left extruder good I'm gonna rename this rigid so I know that's the correct one uh, and I go to left extruder and uh, I know after doing some experimentation that I need to change the extrusion multiplier to 1.15 for this particular ABS plastic that I have and um, I can check the temperature make sure all that's okay you'll have to tweak this stuff based on whatever material you have and hit okay and then I go to my second color this is the right extruder. Just double check, right extruder, good to go. I'm gonna rename this flex, so I just know later on which one it is. Um, and for the right extruder, I needed to change this way up to an extrusion multiplier of two, and I need to change the speed, the default printing speed, down to 10 millimeters a second. And that is super important. That's what I found this machine, the Sigma, needed to print Ninja Flex. Uh, there are a couple other things I want to show you, but first, let's check out what this looks like. Hit prepare to print. 
it says which ones do you want to do i'm going to do all those hit okay and there's our print ready to go and we can go through it and see how it's going to work out the blue is flexible the green is rigid now here's the issue i had and this took me a while to figure out until again my buddy joel the 3d printing nerd came to my rescue by default it puts this gap i'm going to zoom way in by default it puts this gap between the materials just like that this whoop, spot between them uh and i couldn't I didn't know it was doing that. And when the prints came out, they were not bonding. The flexible material and the rigid material were not bonding together until Joel helped me out because he's a swell guy. I'll show you how we fixed it. In the print settings for both of these, if you go to the other tab, there is a horizontal size compensation. And that needs to be positive. It's negative, which means it shrinks the model a tiny bit. So I just changed it to 0.1 instead of negative 0.1. And I made sure I did that for both of the processes like that. I hit OK. Now, if we hit prepare to print, hit OK. Now, when we zoom in and look at these, whoa, we look at the, there's no gap between the materials. And you can see as we go through, it actually overlaps them between one another. And this means when each material lays its layer down, it will be hot enough when it's going down to melt that material into the material next to it. And even these, these tabs that I added, um, I thought I might need those to make sure that the pieces lock together. Um, unnecessary, it turns out. So those are in there, but I don't even need them. The material bonded together well enough that it uh, held together by itself. All right. Let's go do some more work with the prints. With all of my print settings dialed in, I needed to make the actual hand finger parts. If you're curious about how I designed these parts, I drew them out with a good old fashioned pencil and paper. These pieces were then modeled in Fusion 360, but I used my calipers and my drawings to model those pieces so they would exactly fit my fingers. Once I had my models done and my print settings ready to go, I let the Sigma do its thing. And I do really like how this machine handles dual extrusion with the two separate carriages for each extruder head. It's super clean and it's actually really fun to watch. Once the pieces were printed, they acted just how I wanted them to and happily, they fit on my fingers although there was a bit of trial and error involved. The hand plate was printed flat, but I quickly realized that it would be way too uncomfortable, so I used a heat gun to form the plastic and the rubber around a tube. Both the ABS and the Ninja Flex responded well to the heat, as you would expect, and I was able to mold the part exactly to the back of my hand. In future builds of this gauntlet arm hand thing, I may remodel this part, but this was a really easy and quick way to get a custom fit for this prototype. Now to attach the fingers to the hand plate, I printed out some small pegs that were glued into that plate. These were designed to slot into the rear flexible parts of the fingers so that the fingers would be both removable and also slide back and forth whenever the fingers were bent. This is probably the feature that I'm the most proud of. It works really great. I put all of the pieces together and then strapped the hand plate to my paw using a bit of Velcro. The glove fits me almost perfectly and I still have nearly all of the range of motion on my fingers. I'm super stoked with how this turned out. This glove skeleton is the perfect platform to build out armor or maybe robot parts on top of. Those parts could also be 3D printed or you could even just make them out of materials like Warbler or EVA foam. You could easily just glue those cosmetic parts down to these functional pieces to complete your complex costume gauntlet. I am crazy excited with how well this worked out. Look, it works great. In fact, I'm building and designing some robot parts to make a whole robot hand for this arm. Those pieces will be 3D printed, but I'm still working on them. In fact, that'll be next week's video, so stay tuned for that. Being able to print both flexible and rigid materials at the same time in the same print is an incredibly valuable and versatile skills to have. This is really cool. I'd love to hear some ideas that you guys have on how we could also utilize this particular technique for other prop and costume making projects. So let me know down in the comments. I will say it did take quite a bit of experimentation to get the machine to do exactly what I wanted with these materials. But now that I have it dialed in, I'm good to go. I could just print out another hand and call it awesome. I could make a robot hand. I could make a Ninja Turtle hand with just the three fingers. I could even redesign this to have a finger for each one of my fingers instead of just the 
three-fingered thing. And of course, the machine and all the materials that I use for this will be linked down below in case you guys want to check them out. Hey gang, thanks so much for checking out the video today. I hope you enjoyed this little jaunt back into the world of 3D printing. Of course, we're working on getting our next season of Prop 3D ready to go. We're still doing a lot of uh, research and stuff, but when I know more about that, I'll let you know. And hey, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We've got a bunch of other prop and costume making videos coming out, including the completion of my robot hand. Also, check out some of the other 3D printing videos that we have. I'm particularly proud of the Boolean Gemini build. We have a whole playlist devoted to all of our Prop 3D 3D printing videos. Thanks again, of course, to BCN 3D and Matter Hackers for hooking us up with the Sigma machine so that we could experiment with it and learn how to do something really cool. You guys are awesome. That's all I have for today. I gotta get back to work on my robot hand. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.